Hey guys, what's going on? It's Marshall Sutcliffe here from Limited Resources, and I am doing a draft video. A little groggy. <clears throat> Just got back in town from uh, Las Vegas, doing a little World Series of Poker stuff. Uh, but, see if the run good can continue. We have a Mist Raven right off the bat. This is actually a fairly stacked pack. A Mist Raven, a Gloom Widow, Hound of Grizzlebrand is awesome. Gold Knight Commander, sweet. I really like Defy Death. There's even a Wandering Wolf, which is totally... Solid. I'm going to end up taking the Mist Raven because I, I'm just a sucker for that card. I mean, eh, Grizzlebrand is probably right, or Hound of Grizzlebrand is probably right up there with it. Uh, it's just a really nice threat, but man, Mist Raven is just the card I always want to open, and it's a card I want to play. So we're taking it. Okay, this pack is significantly less good. It does have a, th a few things, though. It has a Banishing Stroke, which is, that's a card. Um, you know, a lot of people look overlook the fact that you can put an artifact or enchantment as well as a creature or, or a creature on the bottom uh, of the owner's library. And, you know, I've, I think I've even overlooked that where a guy had like a vigilante justice and I should have used this to uh, take it out and I didn't. There's also a wing crafter, which is just like a sweet card. Uh, and a Moonlight Geist, which is nice. There's also Bladed Bracers and Righteous Blow, which are playable. And Nightshade Peddler is a card I would run. Ghostly Flicker and Ghostly Touch, not as much, but maybe. And Mass Appeal sometimes. So really, to me, though, I'm trying to decide between Banishing Stroke and Wing Crafter. I really like Wing Crafter, but I'm going to take the Banishing Stroke here. I think it's, uh, I think just taking some removal is probably better. I kind of want to be in green, so I'm going to keep my eye open for green cards, but I'm actually just going to take this infinite reflection. This card's sick. It's not that it's, it's, it's actually not that great. Like it, it can definitely be a really bad card in your hand, but I really like some of the things it can do. Plus it's just plain old fun. All right. So we have a holy justice here. He's good. Um, you know, very, very, very clunky. It's a two one for four mana. That's pretty bad. It also costs three mana to activate. Sometimes you get the zombie effect out of it, but I've just found that in this removal light format, that is a card that I actually end up running. Um, Spectral Prison as well. Joint Assault's pretty good. Uh, definitely worth the consideration, and Voice of the Provinces eh, might even make the deck, even though we're already kind of stacking our high drops here. I think I'm going to take the Justiciar this time over the Joint Assault. Doesn't look like green is coming around very much here. Um... So there's an Evernight Shade, which I like quite a bit, but in the colors we're in, I'm just going to take the Farbog Explorer here. Other playables in the, plaque, in the pack are Bladed Bracers. I like that card. And Sumberwall Vigilante. A Vigilante will we'll make the cut sometimes. But uh, I'm going to take the Explorer here. Okay, not a ton here either. Uh, we see another, another see more just utter lack of green. Um, there's a guy snatch, which isn't a card I really like that much, but it's not that it's, it, it is playable. Like you can run it. There's a desolate lighthouse, which is a card I like a lot, except for that. <clears throat> uh, we're not going to be in red. It looks like, so not worth it. There's also a Narstad scrapper, which is kind of unimpressive, but ult ultimately ends up being fine. Like you don't hate to run that guy. Yeah, I think I'm going to take him. I like him a little better than the, uh, guy snatch there. Uh, so we've got a Spectral Gate Guards, a Cloud Shift. There's also a Fervent Cathar in this pack. Fervent Cathar is the best card in this pack. It's not that close, I don't think. Uh, but I think I'll just take a Cloud Shift here. I like Spectral Gate Guards all right as well, but I think five drops we're going to be able to get. All right, so there's another Cloud Shift, but I'm going to take the creature here. Devout Chaplain's fine. He does some things. 2-2 two, two for 3 is within reason. And, uh, yeah, you're, you're, you're never too sad to see him. Okay, I'll take a Defy Death. If we're going to be in white, and uh, I, I like a Defy Death, I like it better than Midvast Protector or Cathedral Sanctifiers because, uh, man, it gives you some pretty sweet inevitability if you can pick up some angels. It makes them just huge. If you can't, you can just get something for value back, like a Mist Raven or whatever. None of these are particularly good. I'm going to take the Mass Appeal just in case we can make that work. Uh, still really nothing here. I guess we'll take an Angel's Mercy, but we're not going to play it easily take the scroll here. Uh, this might even make the deck. Uh, Appetite for Brains will be annoying for us. Unhallowed Pact is not playable. None of these are playable. We'll grab this one, I guess. Scroll's fine, though. Like, I'll just run them in any deck if, if I am get short on playables. And, you know, that does happen sometimes in this format. 
I found it. I found my decks to be kind of all or nothing a lot of the times. Like sometimes I just have feels like all the good playables and multiples of them, and then other times I feel like I'm scrambling a bit and pretty happy to run things like Scroll of Avacyn just to try to get through my deck. <laughs> All right, so we'd like some two drops to start filling in some stuff and some more flyers. Um, you know, Mist Ravens and that kind of thing, of course, take priority. But things like we, we'd like to pick up Appeal from Reality. Uh, Crippling Chill would be nice. Emancipation Angel. You know, these are the cards that I'm looking to pick up. Of course, any of the good rares that we'd like. Uh, Captain of the Mist is one of those rares. What else do we have, though? An Amasa Component, an Alchemist Apprentice, a Latch Seeker. I like him quite a bit. There's that Righteous Blow. We saw one of those earlier. Still not that impressed by that card. It's okay, though. We're definitely just going to take Captain of the Mist here. This guy's pretty good. Whenever a human enters the battlefield, we get to untap him. And he can tap or untap a permanent. So we can do a lot of uh, tricky stuff with that. And I always think that he has flying, but he does not. So we got to remember that. That's a good card, though. Okay, we have a few choices. The best card in the pack is probably this Trusted Force Mage. Also, Human Frailty Sweep, but it's in black. Um, we're not playing either of those. So for us, it's going to come down to the Shield Mate, the Redeemer, or the Mentor. Uh, I'm going to go with the Redeemer here. I don't, I don't really love having another 6-drop, but if I'm going to have one, this is definitely one that I want. It digs us out of a hole. Uh, and when we get to, re if we get to resolve it, <clears throat> it can be a great stabilization card. And it's also a decent beater. A four, four flyer is, uh, yeah, I can do some work. Still want to get some two drops to kind of round out the low end here. There's plenty of them around, but we're going to need to get one. Or we're going to need to get a few of those. Um, yeah, like I said, uh, we're still looking for the same, you know, kind of top tier stuff. Also gold Knight redeemer, defy death. That's a thing. All right, not much here. The green is flowing this direction a little bit better, but even then, none of these cards are particularly amazing. I think the Nettle Swine is probably the best out of these ones uh, for green. I think I'm either going to take the Shield Mate here. I think the Stone Rite is probably the best card in the pack. It's close, but anyway, for us, Scrapskin Drake or Elgod Shield Mate are the two cards I'm looking at. <laughs> They're also the only two cards in our colors in the pack, so I guess that was obvious. Um, I don't hate Scrapskin Drake, but I don't love it either. I think I'm going to take the Shield Mate this time. Okay, so there's a Borderland Ranger. That's a card I want out of this pack, but since we're not in those colors, I can take another Shield Mate, an Alchemist, or a Tormentor's Trident. I kind of like a Trident. We've got some guys that it looks like it would be fine on three toughness, three toughness. That one's just a two-two, but I don't mind running it in. And then, like after you get your value out of Mist Raven, it's nice to be able to just throw the Trident on it and just start slapping people. It really does go better with uh, with two drops, though, because you can trade them up uh, if if you can force your opponent to block. Don't really think I want another Shield Mate that bad. I would play this Alchemist, but I guess I'll take a Trident here. All right, not much for us again. There's just really nothing here for us. Uh, we'll take a Midvast Protector because it might make the deck. There's the third Thatcher Revolt of the draft, which can get a little bit intimidating, but not too bad. All right, well, I'm glad we found a white or a blue card because they're not exactly flowing at this point. All right, so there's a Voice of the Provinces, which would be another six drop for us, which is just really getting to too many. And you've got an interesting rare. Stolen goods. Her opponent exiles from the top of his or her library until she, he or she exiles a non-land card. And then you can play that card without paying its cost. Occasionally you'll hit something lame like a guy snatch where it doesn't really do anything. But usually you'll get like a creature or something. Um, but I think I'd rather just have an Amasa components if I'm going to pay four mana. That's just like much more guaranteed value. All right. Well, fleeting distraction it is. And at this rate, it looks like it's going to make the cut pretty handily. Uh, favorable Winds is not a card that we're going to be able to play in this deck. So I'm just going to cut this Grave Exchange or this Renegade Demon. I'm not going to play the Dreadwaters or the Angel's Mercy or any of these other cards. So which one would I like to see the least? I suppose Grave Exchange. Uh, currently, we don't really have any any cheap guys that we don't mind getting rid of late game. Like They're, they're going to be hitting pretty big stuff, so we're going to need to take care of that. 
Um, Haunted Guardian's okay, but I think I'm just going to go with the Defang. We would like to in, make the game longer so we can get to redeem our mana. Uh, none of these are really playable. Some people like Lair Delve. I don't like it at all. Um, I will cut a Crypt Creeper, though, because that can hit me. And I will also cut a Renegade Demon. All right, well, this deck's not great. We have some playables, though, and we've got a couple of reasonable cards. We're going to need to kind of fill out a whole bunch of things in this last pack. What we're looking for is early on to get some power, you know, some some a rare, another Mist Raven, the cards I was mentioning before, and then later on we want to pick up some two drops to kind of fill in the holes. All right, well, looks like we're just going to have to go with maybe some two drops right now. I guess I could go with a Wing Crafter. I really like Wing Crafter a lot. I think I like it better than these two drops even. I really like the Nefalia Smuggler as well, although currently we certainly don't have any way to really abuse it. I'd rather be a little more proactive. I think I'm just going to take the Wing Crafter here. And that ran out quick. Wow, no blue cards in the entire pack, and there's two very bad white cards. So this, this pack is very disappointing for us. Um, Call to Serve is an option, although not one that I'm fond of really at all and midnight duelist is just no good some good cards against us this guy's good butcher ghoul's pretty good against this although we do have some flyers yeah i guess i'll take this howlgeist i'm gonna hide it for now we'll keep it in mind though cards the most pain for us and we can just defang it but beyond that it's gonna get us pretty good That's more like it. Still a little concerned about colors, but Emancipation Angel is an easy pick there. That's a sweet card. <clears throat> Hopefully we get, we might wheel one of the two drops that we opened. They're pretty popular though, so I, I certainly wouldn't guarantee it. I didn't really go through every card in the pack to, to see how many playables were in there, but all right, well, there's a gift. Seraph of Dawn, we would have first picked out of any of the packs that we've gotten. And Moonlight Geist would also make the cut, but Seraph is just awesome. Definitely where we want to be. Um, oh, that is sweet. We got two back-to-back -back Seraphs, and when you have a Defy Death, you're very happy for that. And when If you get to Defy Death, this thing, it's insane. I think I want a Ghostly Flicker here. We do have the Mist Raven, and it can save some of our other guys, so I think I'm going to go for that over, like, a second scroll, which isn't really exciting. Curse Break and Ghost Form aren't really what I want. I'm going to take a Ghostly Flicker. I don't know that it'll make the cut, though. All right, so this card is a card that I do not like. Ugh. It looks so sweet, and it, I like the flavor and stuff, but that card is horrible. Um, so we have to decide between uh, Alchemist's Apprentice and a Moonlight Geist. Apprentice obviously fits our curve a little bit better. Um, we're not going to be playing a mass appeal, so it being a human isn't really a factor. Moonlight Geist is a significantly better card. Hmm. I feel like taking the Geist. Like, the, the other card's just not powerful enough. Yeah, we'll take a Sanctifiers. We might even run it. And there's a Valiant that we did wheel, so that's a nice wheel, because that was one I was really hoping to get back. All right, a Midnight Duelist I don't think is going to make the cut either way, so we'll cut the Necrobite here, because that, that card is playable, and it can. it's one of the ways that they can kill our Seraph of Dawn. Uh, we'll take the uh, on-color guy, but I don't think he's going to be making it. Control something to our hand whenever he attacks. Is, I think Mist Raven's about the only thing. I guess this does something, but... I don't, I don't think this mid-vast protector is going to make the cut anyway. We're a little stacked up on fours, although we're light on five. So, it, you know, if our curve looked a little different, it wouldn't be too bad. Uh, take a rare or take a junker that somebody might actually play. Yeah, let's take a rare. I mean, let's go camping. All right, well, this thing came around a little bit for us there with those Seraphodons. Uh, that was that was pretty huge. Um, I'm really curious to see what we can do with this. It's a weird card. When it enters a battlefield attached to a creature, each other non-token creature, so everything becomes... I'll rare draft this thing, too. 
becomes a copy of the thing that we that we uh, pick for it. And then whenever we cast another creature, they they also become copies of that. So it's a little into it's. I mean, it's just funny because sometimes you do it on something like an Emancipation Angel, and then pff, the game's just over because now you know even your little Dirtles are three three flyers. But all right, uh, these might make the cut. I don't know yet though. All right, so Redeemer, Stroke, uh, Defy Death, both Seraphs. We'll put the protector in, but I don't think he's going to make the cut just this year. Yep. Explore, a couple of chaplains, a defang, valiant, cloud shift, and sanctifier. All right. And then we've got the big spell here, plus the mist raven, the shield mate. Yep. We're not going to play the mass appeal, I don't think. Flicker I'll put in for now, but I doubt we're going to play it. This is in, and then that might be in as long as, as well as this. All right. So that puts us to 25 without the Narstad scrapper and the tormentor's trident. We might actually want those, though. Let's see what our deck looks like here. I think we can... Hmm. So the Scroll of Avacyn is going to do some work. We do have three angels. I did forget we picked up this guy. He's sweet. Probably can cut the Ghostly Flicker. And then, like, just maybe a random... Four drop, like just cut the midvast protector. I mean, this looks like a pretty decent deck. We could also leave the ghostly flicker in and cut the scroll. I kind of like leaving the scroll in. Um, Cathedral sanctifier certainly isn't exciting. We do have a cloud shift. It's pretty bad though. We are looking to try to stay alive and kind of get stable with the gold knight redeemer. Like, these devout chaplains are pretty unexciting, but let's see what we have for humans here. So we have four, five, six, seven. Well, do we have nine? We do have nine of this current configuration. That actually makes that mass appeal a little more appealing. I mean, if we, if, if we feel comfortable that it's going to be a divination at the very least then uh, I'm pretty happy with that. If it, if it has the potential to be like three or four, then that's really sweet. We do need to make a cut here, though, and I was kind of going to, I was thinking about cutting the Sanctifier. If I do that, then it brings us down to eight, and then I also have to cut something else to put the Mass Appeal in for, which would probably be one of these, so kind of takes it out of our range. We could also cut the Amasa components or the Ghostly Flicker. Like, these are definitely not auto-includes in my mind. Defang's pretty underwhelming, but I think it'll be okay in our deck. The Scroll, this, the Fleeting Distraction, all of these are, are very mediocre and can go. I mean, the, the top end on the Mass Appeal certainly is higher than a lot of these. Hmm. I can definitely see us gaining some life with the Scroll occasionally. I really just like that it cycles, though, and gets us up to our mana so we can start doing things up here. Kind of like a Mass of Components as well, just as a one-of. I kind of don't really want a Mass Appeal and an Amass of Components. That's, that's a lot. The Ghostly Flicker, I don't... What, what, are we doing anything really awesome? I guess we could repair and make flying. That doesn't do anything, though. I think I'm going to cut the Flicker here. I, I, I kind of like flickering a Mist Raven, but, like, what else? Just protecting stuff from removal. I guess I can bring it in if I see a bunch of removal. All right, now the Tormentor's Trident. If I'm going to run a Sanctifier, I really want to run a Trident. You know, I can put it on the Sanctifier. I can put it on the Wing Crafter. I can put it on the Valiant. Hell, I can put it on one of these things and just attack forever. It seems pretty sweet in this deck. So Fleeting Distraction or Scroll? I think it's got to be Fleeting Distraction. It's cheaper. Uh... Well, yeah, it's cheaper to actually get the card out of you, although you can't just do it yourself. You do need a creature on board, but I think that's okay. All right. Let us add some lands. All right, so we have a couple of early blue and then a huge chunk of white, and our deck is clearly mainly white. We've got a little bit here, and we got one double blue spell, so I think we can go 10-7 uh, here pretty easily. We do want to make sure that we have the white to cast these spells early, so. Um, I kind of like Cathedral Sanctifier with Emancipation Angel as well. You, you do want to have early guys to get down to uh, kind of abuse that stuff. 
Yeah, and I think I like Cloud Shift better than Glo Ghostly Flicker. It's just easier to leave mana up for, and it serves the purpose of bouncing our good cards uh, just as well as the Flicker. I mean, is there two cards that we really would want to bounce at the same time? Yeah, or Flicker at the same time. I don't know, but I know that there's one, so. Oops. Oh, all right. Looks like we're going to round one. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'll see you guys there.